Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from the diesel shop. Today we're going to be checking out some steering components on this truck here. We've got a Freightliner FL60 that belongs to the school. Uh, we're just going to run through the steering system real quick. This common checks you should be checking all the time. So let's get started. Hey everyone, so we're up here in our Freightliner. We'll start out here with some simple checks we're going to do. The first one we're going to do when we get into the truck we're just gonna check the steering wheel for free play. So kind of just give it a little wiggle here. We actually do this with a tape measure. So we'll put a little mark on there, with just our fingernail or something, just so we can kind of see it. We don't want to mark it with a mark or anything, nothing permanent. We just want a little spot where we can see it. We don't want to have more than two inches of free play, just moving it back and forth lightly here. So we have our tape measure here. We'll move it all the way to the left and all the way to the right. Right there, we have about an inch and an eighth of free play there. Like I said, we just don't want to have over two inches. So that's our first simple check is just steering wheel free play there. Um, if we have excessive free play, that means something's worn either in the U joints or down below in our linkages and stuff. But uh, we're going to check all that stuff now as we go. Another thing we could do while we're up in the cab, we'll fire it up. So we'll make sure it's in neutral, make sure our parking brakes applied, pushing the clutch, fire it up. Always double check, make sure it's in, out of gear. Take our foot off the clutch. Okay, now we're just going to simply turn it all the way to the left. Okay, all the way to the right with it. All we're doing here is making sure we go the whole way without it bypassing. Get it back. Okay, got it back straight. We'll shut it back off. Okay, so what we're doing there, we're going all the way to the left where we couldn't go any farther and all the way to the right where we couldn't go any farther. We wanted to make sure the power steering pump wasn't struggling, like it was under load trying to go further. Um, there's this little release built into our steering gearbox. Um, we'll show you how to set those later, but those little release there make it so we don't have it under pressure when we're all the way to the one way or all the way to the other way. Okay, so that's all the in-cab inspections here. Now we're going to hop out. One other thing we'll inspect in the cab is the universal joint down here towards the bottom. Uh -huh. So we don't want to grease anything yet until we're done. Uh -huh. We want to make sure there's no play in everything the way it sits. So we'll grab right a hold of this, we'll actually shake it around. We'll hang on to it, shake the steering wheel around. We want to make sure there's no play in this U joint right here. Okay, looks like it's well greased also, but we'll come back through and grease it when we're done with everything here. Also, if it's a tilting steering wheel and stuff, make sure all those functions work. Also, if it's a tilter and steering wheel, we'll make sure all those functions work okay. Yeah, everything looks good. Locks into the different positions. Okay, so that part's all good. Okay, so let's head on out and check the other components under the hood. Okay, we're out here under the hood now. So now we're going to inspect some other steering components here. So always the best way to check the steering components is grab right a hold of them and give them a good shake. So we have our steering shaft coming out of here that's attached to our steering wheel in the cab comes down here to our steering gearbox. So we have a U-joint stuff there to inspect. Um, there's a slip shaft here that can wear out. There's a bushing up inside here that could wear out. So we just want to grab a hold of it and you know, shake it right around. We should be able to shake the whole truck and not really feel any movement in here. We might get just a little bit of play down here with the U-joint spinning around on us, but we definitely don't want any side to side motion or up and down motion out of there. So this shaft should be really tight and you know very minimal movement to it. Okay, so all that looks good. Again, we'll come back through when we're done and grease everything. We have grease fit in here, grease fitting in the U-joint. Basically, any part that pivots, you know, should be lubricated in some way. Okay, so we'll go down, we'll check our power steering gearbox. The hoses and stuff look good. This hose is just painted, so that's the paint that's peeling off on it here. Everything else on it looks good. Don't see any leaks or anything. Okay, we'll check our fluid level. Some of the power steering Reservoirs are clear. I'll show you guys one here in a second. But even if it's clear, I always pull the dipstick out because it could be stained, and not actually be full all the way. Okay, so we'll pull our dipstick out here. We'll wipe her down with a rag. Reinsert it. Check our fluid level here. So right here we have the cold max full. We're good there. Cold hot full. Everything looks good. This is cold. I just brought it in. So. 
everything's good there. If you have to refill the system, always use the proper power steering fluid that it recommends. Some of them use engine oil, some use transmission fluid, some use regular power steering fluid. Like this one here uses a transmission fluid, Dextron two or three. So transmission fluid in this one here, um, Max like to use engine oil, uh, internationals like to use power steering fluid, but always um, refer to the manufacturer for that. Okay, so that looks good. No leaks and stuff there. We'll go down. We got our pitman arm coming out of here, out of our gearbox. We got our drag link down here. Again, we're gonna grab right a hold of the drag link, shake it back and forth as hard as we can. No movement on that end of it. We'll go down here where the drag link connects to the steering arm. Give everything an inspection there. It's nice and tight, no movement at all. We'll get a little twisting movement. That's just the ball joint spinning there, or the ends and the drag link spinning around. But we don't definitely don't want any up and down or in and out movement here. Okay, so that looks good. We'll give a quick little inspection here on all our other steering components. We'll make sure all the nuts are on there. Don't see any cracks, anything obviously worn out. Okay, we have our tie rod down there. So same thing, we'll get underneath, we'll shake that back and forth. We just wanna make sure there's no play in that whatsoever. Another great thing you could do is have a buddy up inside the cab, just with the engine off, just shaking the steering wheel really hard back and forth. Be kind of like this. You'll be able to see if there's any, you know, playing stuff down here. So have your buddy up in the cab and just shaking the heck out of the steering wheel up there. We'll see if there's any play down below. Everything should be moving nice and evenly and no bouncing or skipping or making noise of any kind. Okay, so everything looks good here. We'll go check the other side out real quick. Okay, over here on the Freightliner, we have less parts over here. All we have to do is, you know, check the kingpin and the spindle, our other steering components there. We'll check our tie rod from underneath, same as before. Obviously, you can check the leaf springs and everything while you're all here. It all ties into our steering, keeping everyone safe out on the road. Okay, so everything looks good here so far. We'll run over to this other truck here real quick and show you a couple things on this one. Okay, so this one here, we have the power steering reservoir I was talking about that it's clear. Sometimes you can see on it where the fluid's supposed to be inside there, but it could be stained. Always pull out the dipstick and make sure it's actually where it says it is. Here we have a minimum cold, maximum cold, max hot way up here. So always pull the dipstick out, that way you know for sure. And also look down inside there, make sure it looks pretty good. Nice and clean fluid inside there. Okay, so this one here, set up actually has two gearboxes. So on this international that we cut down, we have a gearbox on the one side here. So gearbox, pitman arm, drag link, everything over here. And we'll go over to the other side of it. We have all the same stuff over here too. We have another gearbox, but you see this one's a little bit different. This one doesn't have the actual um, steering shaft coming in there from our steering wheel. This one's just, you know, ran off of pressure from the other side, they're tied together. So this is more of a, just a steering assist box, but there's, Still the same stuff we had to check on it. We still have to check for leaks. We'll check our, you know, pitman arm coming down off of there. We'll check out our drag link, you know, obviously tie rods, all that fun stuff. Kingpin, I'll show you guys how to check the kingpin in one second here. Okay, let's go back to our freight liner. Okay, so to check our kingpin, we're gonna jack the truck up here and take some pressure off the wheels. Okay, so we want to have our jack underneath the axle there. Start raising it up. Okay, we don't have to go super high with it here. We just need it a little bit off the ground so we could check it with a bar. Okay, one thing I'm watching for as we're jacking it up, 
I watch the tires as it's going up and I want to make sure they don't, you know, um, clunk off the side or anything. I want to make sure they nice and gradual, just raise the tension off of it. I don't want to see any movement there. I'm actually going to check the movement now with a bar. Okay, so now I'm going to check a few things out with my um, truck jack off the ground here. I don't have any jack stands under there right now because I'm not going under there. I was going to go under there now and check the you know, other components from underneath and make sure I had two jack stands under it. Definitely don't want to be under anything without a jack stand. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate the tire around so I can get into one of the holes here in the wheel without um, hitting the ball stem. I'm going to take a big bar and just put right inside there. I'm just going to lift up on the bar here. I shouldn't have any movement here inside the wheel. So if my kink pin was bad, you'd get a clunking noise, quite a bit of you know, back and forth movement there with it. So that looks good that way. Another thing to check to is go right underneath it. Just rains up and down on it. I should, again, I shouldn't get any clunking noise or anything. I should be rocking the vehicle and not get any play in the actual wheel. Two ways a kink pin could wear out. I could have the pin itself worn or the bushes worn or you know, the top and bottom of this would cock sideways, or the bushing's gone internally inside there, the shims, they get up and down play in there. So I don't want to have any play with any steering component. Very crucial. Okay, so we'll go check the other side. The things I'm going to check real quick here, just going to spin my wheel. That's more of a hub and bearing type thing, but um, we still check it on the steering components just because, you know, if our hub and stuff's bad, we could also have a lot of issues out on the road there. So we'll just give it a little spin here. Also, sometimes when you have a bar crying up and down on it, it might not be in the kingpin, it might be in the hub bearings. So if we have any play there, that's when we're going to inspect deeper to see if our kingpin's worn, shifting around, or if it's in our bearing inside our hub here. So we'll just give that a quick spin, make sure everything's good there. Again, we just want to make sure everything's tight, grab right a hold of everything, shake it around. Everything should be nice and tight, no cracks, no breaks, all the pins and everything, all the nuts on everything. Another thing we want to check for is any rubbing paint off or anything. These are kind of small tires on here, so we don't have to worry about it. A lot of times you'll see, you know, trucks put on, you know, 315s or, you know, big wide tires on the front, four and a quarters, 525, stuff like that. Um, problem with those, when we turn it so far, it could come against our um, drag link right here. So I'll just turn this wheel here by hand here. Since we're off the ground, it turns pretty easy. So you can see with everything turned here, I got quite a bit of room on this one here, but on some of the trucks, you'll actually um, get a rub mark right here on our drag link or something. So depending where it lines up with, sometimes it lines up with a pitman arm or drag link, but if we see any paint worn off there, that's a definite no-no. DOT doesn't like that. That means we have to adjust our steering stops. Okay, so if we do see any rubbing or anything, that means our steering stops aren't adjusted right. We look down inside our wheel, be a little hard to see here, but there's a little adjustable stop right here. I could loosen this jam nut up and back this stop either in and out to make it so it stops, you know, um, from contacting our drag link or anything that it would be rubbing against frame, drag link, any component you don't want it to rub against. So if you do adjust the stop, make sure you adjust them on both sides. And then we'd have to change the release settings inside our gearbox. So that's about all there is to our quick little steering inspection here. So just remember, no play in anything, no leaks. Make sure our fluid level's good. Make sure everything looks good. We could also take a quick little inspection at our tires here. Look for uneven wear and stuff like that. Um, these look good. So that means probably our toe's good. And probably our you know, caster's good or camber's good. Just by inspecting our tires, we could tell most of that stuff. So everything looks pretty good here. So let's call it a day. We'll get this lowered back down and out of the shop. Yeah, so have a great day. Stay out of trouble. And keep those wheels turning. Give her diesel.